Welcome back to the stream. Tackling an important issue here on CBS News Chicago right now, advocates for sexual assault survivors are facing a funding crisis. Currently, the Illinois Coalition Against Sexual Assault, or ICASA, is calling on the state's General Assembly to invest an additional $12 million in general revenue funding. Here to talk about it, Carrie Ward and Sarah Layden with ICASA. Carrie and Sarah, we appreciate both of you joining us this morning. Thank you, Brad. So, Thanks, Sarah, Brad. I want to start with you. So these cuts, from what I understand, are coming from the, the federal level, right? And now you're in, I mean, who can afford to lose 12 million bucks? And you guys are going to lose that money. So now you're trying to go to the state route um, to, to fill that hole, correct? That's correct. Um, for about the last um, seven or eight years, federal funding has supported almost two thirds of the statewide rape crisis services here in Illinois. Um, because there's a shortfall in the federal VOCA fund, um, we are facing a nine and a half million dollar cut and we have asked the state to step in and help us offset that cut as well as address issues for inflation and workforce expenses. Okay, so VOCA, you victim of crimes act. I believe that's what correct. That, so that funding has been in place now for how long? So the federal VOCA funding has been in place for several years. ICASA has received this funding since 1986, but in about the last six to seven years, it had increased substantially, and we were rece receiving close to $20 million. Okay. Um, we were notified just in February that that was going to be cut by nine and a half million dollars, effective July one of 2023. So it's a huge hit to rape crisis centers across the entire state. And we can't sustain the same level of services with nine and a half million fewer dollars. Wow, uh, Sarah, to you, experts tell me, and I have seen from, from firsthand experience, really, these rape crisis centers are already currently underfunded, if you will. Um, what would happen if this money vanishes and 10 million bucks is gone? I mean, truly you're going to see the infrastructure that Illinois has relied on for rape survivors uh, be decimated across the state. You're going to see satellite offices close um, in underserved communities. You are going to see already existing wait lists um, extend to the point of, you know, pointlessness. I mean, if you have to wait six months, eight months to get into therapy by hmm. the time something opens up for you, you may have moved on or decided, forget about it, right? Um, you will see access to advocates who help with critical emergency services like meeting survivors in the emergency room or securing, uh, securing a protective order or safety planning um, have limited or maybe even no availability. Um, so this is really, really a critical moment in time for the state to step up and invest in these services. As Carrie shared, relying on federal funding for two thirds of our funding for so long, um, you know, the state really is in a position to demonstrate right now uh, that they care about this issue and that they wanna make it right and make sure that these services remain available. And so what would this money do for you, Carrie, this $12 million asked for, uh, especially at this important time? Really, I, I would imagine from hearing from Sarah, just what kind of stabilize things. It would be kind of procedurally the same, but, but it, it's, it's also really got to be more difficult for you guys asking for funding, so on and so forth, in this political landscape vis-a-vis -vis the overturning of Roe v. Wade, and that, that has its implications here. Can you talk about that for a moment? Hey. Absolutely. Well, first of all, you're correct that one of the things, the $12 million increase that we requested from the state, what that would do is help us sustain services at the level they exist right now. Without that increase in funding, you will see that dramatic de decrease in services that Sarah referred to. Um, we also asked for a little bit more than what was lost because we've been battling inflation as everyone else has and increased workforce expenses. And it's essential to keep our professional trained workforce in place. Um, you're also correct that survivors are facing issues regarding their reproductive rights, regarding their access to services. Um, and I think that those are issues on a global and political level that just adds another element um, of difficulty for the folks that we serve at rape crisis centers. I mean, we are not in a position to lose the level of services that we have right now. Survivors shouldn't pay the price for this lack of availability of federal funding 
and in the state of Illinois in the 30, nearly 30 years that I worked for ICASA, we've seen only a $2.3 million increase in funds allocated for sexual assault services um, in three decades. Um, we think that while this was pressed by the urgency of the loss of VOCA funding, it's also a reasonable request given the amount of funding that um, we've received over these last three decades. Yeah, and it's estimated that uh, the cost for a sexual assault, uh, assault survivor over a lifetime is 120 some thousand dollars, uh, whether that be through therapy or loss of work or so on and so forth, and you are asking for funding that's kind of tantamount to less than a thousand dollars per survivor. So, uh, Carrie, you're in your car right now. I got a sort of last question to you quickly. Um, you got a final push because you're in Springfield. That's why you're in the car. You're about to go into the Capitol and, and ask for money. It's the 11th hour. What is, not graph it for me, your, your big push. Here's where we are right now. Survivors are not responsible for this loss of funding and survivors should not pay the price for access to needed services at one of the most critical times in their lives. The fact that the budget wasn't able to be passed last night for that initial first reading provides this extra opportunity to get in front of the Senate Appropriations Committee and to say, do not make Illinois survivors pay the price for lost services. This is not their fault. The assault is not their fault. And we need to do what we can in Illinois to make these services available. We've worked so hard to expand our reach over the years, and this is a huge setback. We can't let this happen. Okay. Carrie Ward and Sarah Layden from ICASA, two voices for victims of sexual assault. Thank you for your work. Thank you for joining us here Thank on you. CBS Chicago. And we will be following what happens in Springfield.